There is one problem with our model that we have for user right now. Let's go back and create a new user. And let's say we forgot to put in an email when we create that user. Let's go and run that. And you'll see it inserts a user and we didn't have an email address. This is a problem because we'll never be able to look up that user ever again by their email because they never had one. So Rails provides you the ability to add validations. So we can say validates email presence is true. And this will check to make sure there is an email address in the database or in the record before it saves it to the database. So that makes sure that you have an email address for your users. Now there's another way of doing this. Um, in addition to your validations here, you can go into your migration, db migrate, and go into the create users and you can say, null is false. And that will not allow you to insert that into your database and your database will actually enforce that, not just your Ruby code. So that's an extra way of adding protection to this in your database layer, um, which is really, really useful. In order to make that work though, we're gonna need to Rails DB rollback and then Rails DB migrate in order to undo the migration and add the new null is false in there and just fix that migration that we should have done that from the very beginning. And it's okay to edit the migration because we haven't pushed this to production yet. Another tip is you can run Rails DB redo um, or Rails DB migrate redo to actually do that, those two commands in one. It will undo it and then redo the last migration. So that can be very handy if you need it. So with that, we can go and to our Rails console and say user.create without an email address. And we're gonna get no insert into the database. Why is that? Well, that is because our user that it's gonna return will have errors and we can ask if user.errors.any and it says, yes, we do have some. And we can say first to get the first error and it says the attribute email was blank and that was the problem. So that's super duper handy. Now, if we forgot this in our model, our database will still uh, handle that. So we can reload our Rails app in the console with the reload bang and try and create a new user without a email address. This time it's gonna generate that because the validation is not there in Rails, but your database is gonna say, hey, uh, it's not allowed that the user's email is null. So this not null constraint failed on users.email. You're missing that and you need to make sure you have this matching validation in Rails so you get a prettier error when things fail. So now we can reload and we'll get that error. And our user is an ID of nil. So it was not successfully inserted to the database if the ID is nil. The ID is the identifier of individual records and it typically starts at one and counts all the way up uh, to you know a very, very large number. And you can of course add multiple validations for every field and different types of fields as well. So for example, for email, you might want to validate the format where you can pass in format with and a regex, which this will look a little crazy, but it basically says your, um, your email address needs to have any characters that are not a space or an at symbol before the at symbol. You need one at symbol and then the same thing afterwards. It doesn't even have to have a .com, I believe. It's pretty flexible, but this um, allows you to specify a regex that you can use to test the format of an email address. And so we can say a message must be a valid email address, something like that. And when we go into our Rails console, if we were to create a new user and this time say email is A, we're going to get user.errors and we will have the must be a valid email address um, message on the email attribute as well. So that is going to validate against that regex and it does not match. But if we were to use a at a.com or anything like that, um, it would be valid. Now I'm sure you're asking, what is a regex? Well, I'm not gonna get into that in this course too much, but a regex is a way to specify patterns and test if a string matches that pattern. 
So what we have here is this section that says we don't want an at symbol or a space character, but we ha must have at least one of anything else. Then we have the at symbol, which is just expecting an at symbol. And the same thing before, we want to have anything, at least one that is not a space or an at symbol. So if we say A and AA, that is not gonna work. We don't have a valid email address for either of these. But if we say Chris at GoRails, that is valid and it does match. So this is a useful tool for things like that when you're trying to validate that something matches a pattern. It can be very confusing because you can see it looks like a lot of gibberish, but it is pretty useful in certain cases. Emails are very, very hard to validate because they can be absolutely anything. And some things like adding a .com isn't even required. So uh, they have to be very generic to validate an email address, which is why this is what we're using here. So that's all we're gonna to touch on regexes. Definitely a rabbit hole you can go down, but I wanted to show that it is something you would use in a real application. Now our next step is actually to build the controller, the views, to actually go and register a new account rather than having to do it in your terminal, which no one is gonna have access on your server. You want to have a web page that they can put in their email and password and password confirmation. So let's do that in the next video.